Hey everybody, this is Brian with Bear Cards 34. Today I'm back with another show and tell video, this one for the 1981 Topps NFL Football Card set. Uh, in the background here I have a guy from my alma mater, one of my PC guys, Bobby Wagner. Just thought with the fireworks card that was a little appropriate since I'm filming this on the 4th of July for 2021. Anyway, hope everyone is doing well. So this kind of video, for those of you who are not familiar, this is not the typical... Uh, you know, rip a few packs, try to get a few hits type of video. This is more of a history of the cards and the players behind the cards. They're a little longer, uh, but I really enjoy these kind of videos. And there are some other really great channels who do some similar type of uh, things. So I would highly recommend you guys check those out. So this right here is a typical standard card that you're going to see from the 1981 set. This is the Walter Payton base card. As you can see, they kind of have a, a kind of a banner look to those, and, and the players who were all pro the season before, because this highlights the 1980 season, uh, they have the all pro designation. On the back, you'll get, uh, you know, the statistics, as well as a little info about the player themselves. So definitely love this Walter Payton card. Uh, some of the best players also had these in-action cards that came along with the, uh, uh, with the set. And each team also had a team card. Uh, so this one includes Walter Payton. And Dan Hampton, whose rookie card is from that season, also has this team leader card uh, as he had 11 and a half quarterback sacks. That was still before they became the official, an official statistic, but it's pretty nice. Uh, here's another Payton 1981 that I have. And of course my favorite, because I, I, I work to collect the set, it included this one right here. This is a PSA graded. Peyton. Uh, I recently, you might have seen the video, I recently picked up uh, the complete set of uh, Walter Payton Topps Chrome, uh, and that includes one from that issue as well. So definitely some awesome cards here. Um, I highly recommend you get as many Walter Payton cards as you can, because they're awesome. He's awesome. All right. Uh, I'll start off with the elephant in the room, which is, okay, here is the, the most desired card of this set, is the Joe Montana rookie card. Now this is a 2001 Topps Archives version of the card. Uh, and the reason that I held off on making this video, I would have made this a while back, I have the complete set except for Joe Montana. So the oldest Joe Montana card that I have is the 1982 uh, card. And unfortunately... Uh, not his rookie. Now, my brother, when we were kids, even though he had been, I think we started collecting around 1980. I started collecting in 87, no, 88. And our uh, local card shop had packs dating all the way back to 1978. So we purchased some 1980, uh, pa 81 packs. And he did pull and still has his Joe Montana rookie card. So that's pretty cool. I unfortunately do not have it. Now, Joe Montana started the year before, so this is came out during his third year with the team. However, it was his uh, rookie card, and it came out after his second year. The guy that he battled with was Steve DeBerg, who you'll see right here. Uh, Joe Montana ended up taking over the top spot. Uh, but it's interesting to think, because had Montana cracked the, the starting lineup the a year earlier, Montana's rookie card would have been uh, in 1980, uh, you know, along with that set. However, that that was not to be, and so that is the number one card of the uh, of the set. Uh, just to kind of tell you guys a little bit about Montana, because he is obviously the man. Uh, he was born Joseph Clifford Montana Jr. on June 11, 1956, in Pennsylvania. Uh, he's a uh, from uh, Italian American descent. He had a 16-year NFL career uh, after winning the national championship at Notre Dame. Uh, so he came along to the 49ers uh, and was kind of splitting time, like I mentioned, with Steve DeBerg to start and eventually took over the starting role. And this upper deck card kind of announces that 1981, he really took over at that point. Uh, he was a four-time Super Bowl champion, uh, MVP three times. Uh, he has a record for the most career passes without an interception in the Super Bowl, 122 passes in four games, never threw a pick. Uh, he also is the all-time passing rating leader in Super Bowl history at 127.8. Uh, he had an amazing career. He was great. Uh, Montana and Rice, you know, very well known together. 
Uh, he was eventually traded to the Chiefs for his final two seasons because Steve Young really evolved. Montana had had some injuries. Young was, uh, well, younger um, and was playing so well that the 49ers decided to ship him off to the Chiefs. And he did really well there. He led KC to an AFC championship game in 94, member of the Hall of Fame in 2000, uh, two-time MVP, the 1986 Comeback Player of the Year, and he's noted for being really cool under pressure. Eight-time Pro Bowler, and on the NFL Network's 100 All-Time Greatest Players from a few years back, they put uh, Montana as the number four greatest player of all time, and his teammate Jerry Rice was actually number one. Um, I'll mention here and just kind of show some highlights. Uh, they do include things such as, you know, the Super Bowl. Uh, right there we had the Raiders 27, Eagles 10. And they also made championship cards for the, the two games leading up to the Super Bowl. Uh, along with that, you'll see they had uh, statistical leaders. Right here we have Ron Jaworski and Brian Seip. Uh, I really like Jaworski. Uh, he's been a good analyst with football over the last few years as well. Now, Brian Seip kind of came out of nowhere. He's one of those guys, kind of when I was a kid, I would compare him to Don Majikowski, where suddenly he had this magical season. Uh, Brian Seip, for the 80 season, was an All-Pro. He was the NFL's MVP. Uh, he just did, had, a, had a great year there for Cleveland. You know, and then it kind of didn't, didn't really match up after that season. However, the 81 set definitely acknowledged uh, how great of a year he had. Uh, the NFL receiving leaders included rookie Earl, Kirp, uh, Earl Cooper and also Kellen Winslow. Uh, who, he was in his second year, although that is his rookie year of football cards. Uh, then the scoring leaders, we had a couple of kickers. Uh, for the quarterback sack leaders in 1980, we had Al Baker and Gary Johnson. And again, those were not a, an actual statistic at the time officially yet. Um, and then the NFL interception leaders, we had Nolan Cromwell and Lester Hayes. And then the punting leaders, because, of course, everybody wants to know that, uh, Luke Pet Prestridge and also uh, the late Dave Jennings, who was actually a really good kicker, too. Uh, along with that, we had the checklist cards so that everyone could know which cards they, they had and which cards they needed. Okay, now I'm going to just highlight a handful. Well, not a handful. I'll, I'll highlight... I think all of the Hall of Famers, um, I tried to pick them out, I, I think I got all of them. Anyway, these cards right here, um, this set has a bunch of legendary players, Hall of Famers. So these cards came out in 1981, and uh, just to kind of put that in perspective of what was going on at the time, the number one movie that year was Raiders of the Lost Ark, and uh, the number one song was Betty Davis Eyes by Kim Carnes. Uh, now, uh, uh, at this time, you could buy a pack, a wax pack of these for 30 cents. And they also had those uh, plastic foil, I don't know what they were called, plastic wrapped cards. I think they were like 45, 48 cents, something to that effect uh, as well. Um, so, you know, really affordable at the time. Uh, nowadays, if you want to buy a box of this, it's going to cost you a lot of money, even a pack. And that's, of course, because everybody's still trying to hunt for that Joe Montana uh, rookie card. Now, the uh, cards are still airbrushed. You know, this is still before they had the, the logos on the cards, unfortunately. Um, but uh, the one thing of note with these, if you notice the, the Topps logo up here in the corner, this is the first year that Topps used their logo on the front of the football cards. Uh, here's a nice Mike Haynes. Uh, I'll mention, too, on the back of these, they mention a little tidbit about a lot of the players. So on this one, for example, Mike married his college sweetheart. Uh, you know, I actually saw uh, Ed from Angry Old Man. Check out his channel if you haven't already. He did a through the mail of Mike Haynes recently and got a couple, a couple of uh, cards back, autographed, or a couple autographs. He has a nice signature. So again, you'll see we got Dan Fouts as well as his super action. And then we have Steve Largent as well as his super action. And I love his super action card. I mean, again, it's a shame that the airbrush is there. But it's a, it's a nice action shot for sure. Uh, so again, you're going to see lots of legendary Hall of Famers here uh, in this set. Of course, the most, most people are going to want to get that Jan Stenrud for sure. Uh, Charlie Joyner, you know, that's him after he uh, moved over to the Chargers and finished out his career. And when he retired, he was the uh, receiving leader for a very short time before Steve Largent broke that. 
You'll see here a couple more of the greats. Ozzie Newsom was always one of my favorites as a kid. Uh, and James Lofton, you know, I saw him at the, pretty much with him, I, I, I watched him on the Bills and a little bit on the Raiders. But yeah, he was a, he was a fun player to watch. Randy White. Harry Carson. He has, by the way, Harry Carson has an awesome autograph. So if you're ever going to pick up some autos of, of uh, some of the players, his signature is a really good one. Ray Guy, one of the great punters of all time. I got Mean Joe Green. Dan Deerdorf, who in my day he was on Monday Night Football. The late Fred Dean. And then this guy right here, Bruce Hardy. Uh, I kind of mentioned him. Uh, I, I like to include local players from my home state of Utah. Uh, this is a Bruce Hardy card. He was born in Murray, Utah, which was not far at all from where I grew up. Uh, he was a ninth-round pick out of Arizona State. Had a 10-year career with the Dolphins. Um, and in 1974, uh, at Bingham High in South Jordan, Utah, he appeared on the cover of Sports Illustrated, which is pretty cool. Now, this one, of course, I like because Chicago Bear, Len Watersheed, uh, and I don't know if I pronounced his name correctly, Walter Scheid, Walter Sheed. Anyway, he uh, played at Southern Utah University, which is kind of one of our smaller colleges here, but he ended up making it into the pros, which is pretty great. And then this card right here, the Broncos 1980 team leaders, uh, shout out Broncos Breaks, has a Rulon Jones. He had 11 and a half sacks that season. And uh, his official rookie card would not be for two years later, but he does appear on this card on the team leaders. Uh, and he went to Utah State, my alma mater. So definitely enjoy having that card as part of the set for sure. Um, I'll mention here as well, this is uh, Vince Evans. Uh, now this guy, yeah, no ties at all to uh, Utah whatsoever, but he is a Chicago Bear and this is his rookie now, Vince was a sixth-round draft pick by the Bears in 77. He spent seven years with Chicago um, and also a couple years with the USFL, followed by a, a really nice career as a backup for many years with the Raiders. Um, he was kind of in rotation as a starter. The Bears drafted Jim McMahon, and uh, eventually he lost that job. But, you know, in college he, he was the MVP of the 77 Rose Bowl for USC, He's the only player on the Bears to score a perfect quarterback rating in a game. Not a surprise that there aren't more. Uh, it was against Green Bay. He threw for 316 yards and three touchdowns, 18-22 passing. Uh, yeah, and so anyway, on the Raiders, he spent many years as a backup. And at 40 years old, he even made three starts. So that's not bad for a guy who was out of football in the year 1987 before a player strike brought him back. And then he ended up staying with the team and, and was there until 1995. So really did have a really solid career as a, as a mostly backup quarterback. Now, Ken Green, rookie card here. This is not really of note unless uh, you're a fan of the Amazing Race. Uh, he's from Lewiston, Idaho. He played for seven years. He was a first-round draft pick. But he was in the 13th season of the Amazing Race with his wife. And they came in second place. So, uh, you know, they almost, uh, almost... Uh, won the whole thing, the million dollars. This card, Frank Lewis, I just thought this was kind of interesting on the back. It says, uh, Frank is a deputy sheriff during the offseason. So I just thought that was kind of kind of interesting there. Uh, and then this card right here, we've got Doug Williams, Super Bowl MVP for the uh, Redskins back in the, after the 87, or yeah, 87 season. And it mentions here, Doug's first coach in junior high was his brother. That's kind of kind of an interesting thing. Um, I just put this one in because go Bears, Gary Fensick. Here is a Jerry Robinson rookie. Um, he played 13 seasons. He played in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. He was the 21st pick in 1979, and he was recruited to UCLA as a tight end by his coach Dick Vermeil, who later coached him on the Eagles. Uh, and Vermeil converted him to linebacker, where he was a three-time All-American uh, very, very impressive player. He made the Pro Bowl in 1981, the year that this card came out, and he also appeared in the Super Bowl 15 with the Eagles. And he had a really solid career. He retired with the Raiders after the 81 season. And here's Kent Hole. He was a, you know, a great lineman who helped block for Eric Dickerson. He only played nine years, but he made five Pro Bowls. So I just thought that was, you know, a good card to to highlight just the fact that, you know, he was one of those guys who Eric Dickerson uh, had some early success with. Here's a Phil Simms second year card. 
Next up, we've got Charles White. He was a nine-year NFL running back, and in 1979, he won the Heisman Trophy. He ran for over 2,000 yards and had over six yards of carry. He's also a two-time Rose Bowl MVP. Uh, So he was the 27th pick uh, of the draft for the Browns. It was a very disappointing career with them, four seasons. He had less than uh, than 1,000 total yards. And he only had a little like three and a, less than three and a half yards per carry, uh, so they cut him before the 1985 season. And his old college coach, uh, John Robinson, was then coaching the Rams, and so he went on to sign with the Rams and had a real career year in 1987, leading the league with almost 1,400 yards rushing and 11 touchdowns. He made the Pro Bowl. And he was voted the uh, comeback player of the year that year. And it was a strike-shortened season, and he did play during the strike. But he also had really good stats uh, you know, against the, the regular players as well. So it was a nice way for him to kind of finish up his career. Uh, Earl Krup- Cooper rookie card here. He was the 13th pick of the draft that year. And like I mentioned earlier, he was the receiving leader for the NFC. Um, and uh, had a really good start to his career. 83 receptions as a rookie. He was a key player uh, during the drive, uh, the drive that culminated in the catch during the 1982 uh, playoff game. Uh, he caught, uh, what was it, a touchdown in Super Bowl 16 and, and uh, two-time Super Bowl champ. Uh, he did have one year with the Raiders to kind of finish his career, and he actually broke a record that year, most receptions in a season by a rookie running back. So pretty cool there. And then for some of you guys, you may remember J.T. Smith. I knew him. I, I think he was on the Cardinals when I knew who he was. Uh, but he played from 1978 to 1990, two-time Pro Bowler in 80 and 88, three-time All-Pro. And in 1987, he led the NFL in receiving yards uh, and receptions. So definitely a, an impressive player there. Next up, we've got Billy Sims. He was born on September 18, 1955. This is a guy that was on his way to the Hall of Fame. Absolutely. He was two-time All-American at Oklahoma, won the Heisman Trophy in 1978, first overall pick in 1980. During his Heisman year, he averaged over 7.5 yard, yards a carry. Um, unfortunately, he had a really serious injury, so he only had like a a four-and-a-half-year career, uh, but was well on his way to Canton. He made the Pro Bowl in 1980, 81, and 82. Uh, The Lions went to the playoffs in 82 and 83, which they don't do very often. You know, and unfortunately, halfway through the 84 season, he had a serious knee injury against the Vikings in late October, and that was kind of it for him. Uh, He had 5,100 yards, four-and-a-half yards of carry. He had another 2,000 yards receiving Um, He spent two years trying to rehabilitate before officially retiring in 1986. Uh, Chris Berman had given him the nickname Kung Fu Billy Sims because there was a play where he leapt in the air to avoid a tackle and kicked Oilers cornerback Steve Brown in the head. And so he kind of got that nickname. Uh, He did attempt to come back in 1988. Um, He offered to play with the Lions um, uh, and write a blank check to allow the Lions to give him a value based on how he played. Uh, and I guess there was some interest, but it never really materialized. And then soon after that, of course, they got another number 20, uh, the great Barry Sanders, who did not have an injury played career and did end up in Canton. And I really feel like Billy Sims would have been on his way there. So the number 20 has kind of been unofficially retired uh, because of a trifecta of players. We got, or, you know, Barry, Billy, and then also Lem Barney. And so my understanding is that that number is kind of... Uh, kind of retired at this point. Um, Ahmad Rashad, loved watching him play back in the day. Mark Murphy, okay, this is kind of an interesting one. This is his rookie card. He played for the Redskins from 77 to 85, and he's currently the president and CEO of the Green Bay Packers. So he's involved in all that Aaron Rodgers drama, and I think he, there was a, an article where he had uh, described Rodgers as a quote-unquote complicated fella. And so, yeah, he's part of all that that's going on in the news these days. Uh, but in 1983, he was an All-Pro. He led the, interse- uh, the NFL in interceptions with nine, and he was a Super Bowl 17 champ with the Redskins. And then, of course, we've got another one of the key rookie cards in this set, Kellen Winslow, one of the greatest tight ends in NFL history, 13th player pick in 79, spent nine years with San Diego, had to retire after a knee injury during the 87 season, and he was part of the Air Coriel 
receiving uh, assault led by Dan Fouts uh, that was just amazing. He led the NFL in receptions in 80 and 81, only the second tight end ever to do that in back-to-back seasons. He had 89 catches in 1980 right here in this year, and that was a tight end record at the time, breaking Mike Ditka's 75. Um, He also had 1,290 yards receiving, which was also a tight end record at the time, and he caught five touchdowns in a game in 1981. there was uh, some say he had one of the greatest games of all time, especially by a tight end where there was a playoff game against Miami and after the 81 season where he had 13 catches, 166 yards, and a touchdown, and he blocked a field goal with only a few seconds left in overtime. So to put in perspective how much of a shame it is with his injury, in 1984 he was on a record-setting pace where he had 55 catches. Uh, catches in seven games. Uh, he was playing the Raiders in game seven. He had over 100 yards receiving, and then he suffered a horrible knee injury. Uh, the doctor who did the surgery said his knee looked like spaghetti or like a couple of mop ends. So that just sounds terrible. Somehow he did return a year later in mid-85 and played through the 87 season, but he never was able to recapture that dominance. But he made it to the Pro Bowl five times, and because he was just so great during that time when he was healthy, he did make the Pro Bowl in uh, 1995. Uh, This is the last year to have a Ricky Bell card. I just mentioned that because there was a a made-for-TV movie about him. He passed away, unfortunately, in the 80s. Uh, but he did have three cards made, and th- that year was his final year of having that done. Uh, another notable player, Archie Manning, the dad of Peyton and Eli. And it mentions here Archie was drafted as a shortstop by the White Sox, so kind of interesting there. Uh, here's an Ezra Johnson card. This is his rookie card. He had a really good career, 15 years. He played from 77 to 91. He made the Pro Bowl in 78, where he had 20 and a half sacks unofficially. He is in the Green Bay Packers Hall of Fame, and he was talented, but he did have a reputation for kind of lacking discipline. He once ate a hot dog on the bench during a preseason game, which I think is actually kind of funny. (laughs) But anyway, Jim Haslett right here, he coached the Saints for a little while from 2000 to 2005, and he was even a a coach of the year uh, in 2000. Um, He's currently the Tennessee Titans inside linebacker coach. And then, of course, we have David Woodley, rookie. He played from 80 to 87, four years with the Dolphins, um, until, you know, this guy right here showed up that a few of you may have heard of, Dan Marino. So Woodley, you know, he bridged the gap between Greasy and Marino. Um, He was the eighth-round pick, but he still was the team's MVP uh, his rookie season. And in 82, he led the Dolphins to the Super Bowl, where they lost to Washington. And then Dan Marino came in. He had lost his job by week five of 83, traded to the Steelers. Unfortunately, after his career, he went back home to Louisiana, started drinking heavily, caused a lot of health issues. He had a liver transplant when he was only 33. And unfortunately, in 2003, he passed away from liver failure. He was only 44 years old as well, so real shame there. Uh, Nesby Glasgow, uh, he played 14 years. He was an eighth-round draft pick, and he was the defensive player of the year for the Colts in 84 and then with the Seahawks in 1990. So I just mentioned, you know, not a not a bad uh, career for a guy who was the 207th pick. Um, unfortunately, he passed away last year after a long battle with cancer, but he had quite a great career there. Oh, this one I just wanted to show. Haven Moses and uh, David Whitehurst. If you look here on the back, it mentions Haven... Uh, works for a luggage firm during the off season and on the back of David Whitehurst card it says the exact same thing Haven works for a luggage firm during the off season so they messed up and and uh made a little error there so kind of interesting next up we have Dan Ross uh he uh was the 30th pick in 79 and uh he uh recorded uh uh 11 receptions for 104 yards with two touchdowns in Super Bowl 16 it was great but they lost. Had they won, he would have been the Super Bowl MVP, most likely. Made the Pro Bowl in 82, played in the uh, USFL as well. Uh, passed away, unfortunately, at the age of 49 uh, back in 2006. Uh, then we have Art Monk, one of my all-time favorite players. 14 years with the Redskins, one with the Jets, and then finished up with the Eagles. In 1984, he had a then-record 106 NFL receptions uh, and... Uh, in one season, and he won three Super Bowls with Washington, you know, so pretty great. He finished uh, with uh, 12,721 receiving yards, almost got up to near a 1,000 receptions, especially for that time period. That was pretty great. Uh, Then we got Fred Smearless here, 14-year career. 
uh, 32nd pick in 79, five-time All-Pro, and he's part of the Bills' 50th anniversary team. So not a lot of people r really you know, re mention him, but that's still a very good career and a nice little rookie to have. And then I note this Oilers card just to show that they put uh, punt return leader right here because Earl Campbell would not have his cards made. He had an amazing season after 1980, uh, but other than his rookie season, there are no cards of Earl Campbell. They he was not a uh, they were not allowed to make cards of him. And so this Oilers team card has Carl Roach's 384 punt return yards instead. Next up. We've got Nick Lowry, uh, who was born in Munich, Germany. Uh, he was a three-time Pro Bowler, and when he retired, he was number one in field goal percentage and the most field goals in NFL history. He's the Chiefs' all-time leading scorer and in the Chiefs' Hall of Fame, so a nice little rookie card there. Uh, Mike Ken was a three-time first-team All-Pro. Bill Walsh once said, I've never seen any offensive tackle with his agility and quickness. And then Art Still was a four-time Pro Bowler, two-time All-Pro, and he's the cousin of former defensive tackle Devin Still, who played for the Bengals and Texans, for those who remember him. This guy, George Cumbie, I just mentioned because in 1985, he was the linebacker who was twice pancaked by my guy, William the Refrigerator Perry, on lead blocks for Walter Payton. And he's also the one who, a few games later, the Fridge beat out in a pass route and scored a, a reception touchdown. Uh, all of that was on this guy right here. Here is John Matuzak, who was sloth in Goonies. Just a quick shout out to Hey You Guys. He has a great card channel. And uh, yeah, so John Matuzak, sloth from Goonies. Next up, we've got the great Dan Hampton, the fourth pick of 79. 12 years with the Bears, Super Bowl champ, four time Pro Bowler, all decades team, nicknamed Danimal. And uh, during his playing time from 79 to 90, the Bears ranked number one overall in that time in the fewest rushing yards, fewest rushing touchdowns, least total yards, fewest points, and the most sacks of any team in the NFL. So he was dominating. And when I was a kid, he was the very first person to ever send me a TTM back. And he sent me a personal uh, letter. So big fan of him. We've also got Walter Put Payton's brother, Eddie who played his final three years with the Vikings. He had over 5,000 career return yards. Then we've got Kenny King, who uh, was picked by the Oilers in the 79, but traded to Oakland. He had a really nice uh, couple years with uh, Oakland. Uh, he made one Pro Bowl, and he had a Super Bowl record for the longest touchdown receptions, which was 80 yards from our guy Jim Plunkett. Uh, so that was pretty impressive. Nice rookie card. Then we've got Mark Gastineau's rookie, second round pick in 79, part of the New York Sack Exchange, five-time Pro Bowler, three-time All-Pro, Jets Ring of Honor. In 88, he was leading the AFC in sacks with seven after seven games, and then he suddenly retired. Uh, so that was kind of interesting there. He had some off-field troubles and more recently some health problems, but an, an amazing talent. And, of course, we cannot forget the late, great Dwight Clark, 10th uh, round draft pick. Played nine years, best known for the catch in the 81 NFC title game, which was in January of 82 against the Cowboys. Down six, less than a minute to go, third and three, and he makes this impressive leap to catch a six-yard touchdown pass in the back of the end zone from Joe Montana. Two-time Pro Bowler, two-time Super Bowl champ. His number 87 is retired. He unfortunately died from ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease. Uh, a few years ago, but he was just a, a great player, and there's a really good football life of him on NFL Films if you guys want to check it out. Eddie Murray here, he had uh, about a 20-year career, um, and so I make note of that because he played for many, many years, won a Super Bowl with the Cowboys, just wanted to highlight him. Then we've got this Rod Martin rookie card, two-time Super Bowl champ. He had three interceptions in Super Bowl 15, also went to the same high school as Warren Moon. We had a Joe Cribs. He was actually a really good player um, for his first few years. Then went to the USFL and uh, also a Carlos Carson rookie card. He had a great career as well. Thanks so much, everybody. Talk to you next time.